Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on environmental science and specifically going over the water cycle. Let's get started on this next video. So what is the water cycle? Well, the water cycle is a process by which water circulates between the Earth's oceans, atmospheres and land, and this involves precipitation as rain and snow, drainage into streams, rivers, and return of that water to the atmosphere via evaporation and transpiration. Now, what the water cycle is going through and showing, it's the continuous movement of this water within the Earth and the atmosphere, and it gets pretty complex. We have to think about how water exists as a liquid, as a vapor, and as a solid as it goes through and originates in the clouds, precipitates back to Earth, and then is either evaporated or transpired back into different systems there. So liquid water is going to flow across the land, groundwater is going to move into plants, plants are going to go through transpiration, the water is going to evaporate, and we also have these processes called sublimation and deposition, which we'll go through and talk about. So let's go through and look at this diagram here in this graphic to better understand the water cycle. And there's going to be three main pools of water that we're going to go through and talk about that are important when we talk about where our water is either going to originate or flow into. Those are going to be rivers and lakes, oceans, and then we have groundwater here. Now remember, an ocean is just a large expanse of sea. A river is a large natural stream that flows into an ocean. And then groundwater is going to be under the cracks in the soil. And it's usually going to consist of sand and rock. Now, if we look at this in a little bit more detail, what we're going to see, the most common example here is this first process. So if we start from the atmosphere, we're going to see water move its way down either via rain or we could say snow here. And that water is going to precipitate down from the land and slowly work its way down into the rivers and lakes. And that process of precipitation is going to move the water. It's either going to infiltrate the ground or it's going to go through and run into the ocean. Now the next process here that we're going to see as the water goes through and moves into the ocean is evaporation here. Evaporation is where the water is going to go through, move upwards, go into the clouds and condense, and condensation is what we see when we see cloud formation. And then this last one that we'll go through and look at is going to be transpiration here. Transpiration is what's going to go through and allow water to move through plants and life and then move back into the atmosphere. So these are going to be the four basic things that we're going to go through and talk about in this course for the water cycle. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail now. So before getting into any of this, we have to understand the structure of water. We all know water can exist as a solid and a liquid and a gas. And we've seen these commonly in our daily lives. But we have to understand the molecular structure of each of these systems there. So in a solid, if we zoom in on this ice here, we're going to see that the molecules are very rigid and they're compacted together. If we go through and increase the amount of energy, the vibrational pattern that we see within that, and we increase the vibration of those molecules there, we increase the temperature, we increase the energy, we're going to see it turn into water. If we increase that temperature again and we vibrate those molecules even more, we're going to see water turn into a gas or a vapor. And what we can see here is we can go from a solid to water to gas, solid to liquid to water, or we can go right from a solid to a gas. We can also decrease the vibration, we can decrease the energy, and we can see that we can go back from a gas, a water, or to a solid here. So we can see that this process, all it is, is the arrangement of the atoms, how much the atoms are vibrating, and how they go through and exist either as a solid, a liquid, or a water there. So if we go through and look at these patterns and these arrangements, what we're going to see is solid ice is going to have the least amount of energy, and it's going to be vibrating the least. Because of that, the molecules can stay closer together, and they can create that solid structure that we see as ice. Water, as we increase that energy, is going to have a medium amount of energy. The molecules are vibrating somewhere in between a solid and a gas. So therefore, they're going to spread themselves out a little bit more, and they're also going to be a water or a liquid. 
Now lastly here we see gas is a vapor and that has the most amount of energy. They're vibrating the most and because of that, because they have the most amount of energy, the molecules are going to be spread out the furthest and this is why we see it existing as a gas or a vapor. So we have to understand that structure in order to understand as we go through phase changes here within the water cycle. All right, so perfect. Now that we understand that, let's go through and look at evaporation here. Evaporation is the process of turning water from a liquid to a vapor there. So we're going to see our water molecules are going to be just flowing around in that liquid solution. We're going to increase the amount of energy. They're going to move, vibrate more. They're going to exist as a gas, and they're going to transform from a liquid into a gas vapor. Remember, we're increasing the energy increasing that vibrational pattern there and what we're going to see there is the molecules will spread themselves out more so they're going to exist as a vapor and evaporation is where we're moving that water we're taking it from those rivers those lakes or those oceans where they're pooling from the other parts of the water cycle they're evaporating and forming the clouds that we see in the atmosphere and that's important because we're going to go through and recycle that water and continue to keep the water cycle moving now condensation, this is going to be the process next that we look at for our water cycle here. So if we think about condensation, if you've ever had a glass of juice or a glass of really cold water on a hot day, what you're going to see is this process of condensation. Water molecules, which are a vapor in the air, are going to come in contact with that very cool glass of juice or liquid. And what we're going to see is that water go through and form on the outside of the glass. Condensation is the conversion of a vapor to a liquid. So what we're doing is we're decreasing the amount of energy, we're decreasing the vibrational pattern of those molecules, and we're going to see that they're gonna get closer together so they're going to be a liquid. Now condensation, this is responsible for what we're going to talk about next in precipitation. Condensation is what goes through and forms all of the clouds that we see in the atmosphere. And it's what allows rain and snow to go through and fall. So condensation is leading us up into this next process that we see, which is precipitation here. Now precipitation is when the water is released from the clouds in the form of rain, freezing rain, sleet, snow, or hail. And precipitation, this rain that is going through and falling, is a result of condensation. So remember, we're going evaporation to condensation to precipitation. So how does rain go through and form? Well, in the atmosphere, what we're going to observe are these dirt particles. And these dirt particles are going to come in contact with water vapor in the atmosphere that's gone through and evaporated. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to condense. And as the water molecules continue to multiply and condense and add up on that dirt particle, we're going to see the accumulation of a water droplet. Well, eventually that water droplet is going to get so heavy. There's going to be so much water that's going through and forming there. And what it's going to do is turn into a droplet that's going to go through and fall out of the atmosphere there. Now, when we talk about precipitation, though, we want to understand that this isn't a phase change like we've talked about with evaporation and condensation. What we're seeing here is precipitation. We're generally just talking about a liquid that's going through and falling. Now that can be different if we're talking about snow. Snow is going to come down as a solid and then it's going to melt and turn into a liquid eventually. But generally when we're talking about precipitation, we're talking about that water there. Now this is really important because water is going to influence a variety of things. Water influences the intensity of climate variability and change. It's the key parts of extreme events such as droughts and floods, and its abundance and timely delivery are critical for meeting the needs of society and ecosystems. So humans are going to use water for drinking, industrial applications, irrigating agriculture, hydropower, waste disposal, recreation, etc. And it's important that water sources are protected for both human uses and ecosystem health because without it we really can't survive. So we want to be thinking about this hydrologic cycle and we want to be thinking about this water cycle because the depletion of the water can influence population growth, pollution, development, and it has an effect directly on us as humans. It also has an effect on the globe. So we want to be thinking about the water cycle as we go through and move into our next unit here. 
All right, so this is going to be the end of the video, but there will be a second part to this series here where we go into more detail of some of the more complex processes. So we wanna think about three things. Did you learn? Did you learn a couple of things? Parts of the water cycle, did you learn about evaporation, precipitation, and condensation? And then lastly, did you go through and learn about phase changes and the energy associated with moving from phase changes? This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you all in class tomorrow.